It's one thing for sure, the sun always comes up the next day. No matter how crazy shit is, right? No matter how crazy the world is. So I'm going to take the extraordinary step of walking through a New York City park after a murder in a park where uh, the girl was brutally murdered. I want to talk about that. I got a lot of thoughts in my head today. I got a lot of thoughts spinning around in my mind right now. I want to, I want to unload. <laughs> so, but first, before that, um, I have to do this advertisement. So, um, I have two sites running side by side right now. It's Marcus Conti and Marcus Conti News. So if you're watching this on Marcus Conti News, kindly subscribe to Marcus Conti. If you're watching this on my main channel, Marcus Conti, kindly go down into the box below and click on and subscribe to Marcus Conti News. Because what I'm trying to do is make the full transition into Marcus Conti News uh, that appears to be uncensored, uh, not shadow banned. The, the, my main channel is shadow banned. So we're just trying to move it over to a, a uh, more legitimate platform that will be seen by more people. Okay, so thank you for doing that. Very important. Very important because without money, the, the, you know, this channel is not monetized anymore. Still need to get uh, the subscribership over 1,000. It's close. It's like 600. Just keep subscribing to it and, then, uh, and we'll get over the 1,000. So thank you very much. So... Happy Friday the 13th, Marcus Conti reporting. And I want to talk about two things. I want to, I just want to touch on the, um, the murder in the park, Tess, Tessa Majors. It seems to be, um, people are saying I jumped to a conclusion to say that it was racist. So I want to address that. And um, I want to talk about the uh, Democratic uh, debates for whatever reason. Listen, call me old fashioned. But I still believe in elections. I still believe in, I believe in you. I believe in the American people that we can overcome the, the uh, corruption in our government and restore power back to the people. I believe that. And I believe it comes through uh, a, a, you know, a refinancing of government. I believe that. Call me stupid. I don't know. Say whatever you want, man. Fuck it. You know what I mean? But that's what I believe, and that's what I'm going to keep talking about. Uh, and I know a lot of you believe it, too. So I guess I'm just addressing the haters. So, you know, maybe someday you'll come around to believe. Maybe. Yeah. So so let, let's talk about the... Let me get this, the murder thing out of the way. All right? So I said, I read the story yesterday. I saw the news, like everybody else did. And the local papers were reporting that four youths were suspect and that they actually cited a housing project in Harlem. Now, I'm very familiar with the area. So for me to say that, you know, that, that the housing projects tend to be 80, upwards of 80 uh, percent minority black is not a stretch of the imagination. It's good that there's probably cops in the park. They're driving all over the place. Hold on a second before I get hit by a car. I don't know what the hell these people are doing, but... But anyway, there's, a, I guess, maybe a police presence in the park. They look like workers. I don't know. So anyway, so... Um, and, and I am prepared to... to I'm not walking it back at this point because suspects are still um, out there, fugitives still at large in the in the stabbing death of uh, Tessa Moore. And if it turns out that it was two white kids, I'll be the first to say I was wrong. But what I'm talking about is systemic. I'll tell you a story, and maybe this will help you understand. Right? A story always, an anecdote, right? I was a guitar teacher. Uh, I still am a guitar teacher sometimes. And I got, I got this call to teach at a, um, at a church, but teaching children. <laughs> you think you're serene and, and, and 
you know, and, 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 and uh, well-mannered. Well, wait till you're around kids and see how they change you, right? But when I'm around five, you know, when I'm around young kids, I turn into a young kid. So it was a match made in heaven. I was, they loved me. I loved them. But it was a black church, and all the students were black, maybe four or five of them. I have pictures to prove it. I, I mean, it was just a wonderful experience. So one day I got there early into the church where, the, uh, where we would meet. And, I, and one of the young girls was doing her homework. She was sitting down at the table, minding her own business, doing her homework. And I walked in with my guitar, and I, and I didn't interrupt her because I saw she was doing her homework. And I said, I said, well, what are you, what are you, you, know, what are you studying? And she goes, oh, history, I'm studying a little history. I said, yeah, well, can I? And I, and I, I was reading along with what, what, was, was, what was being said, and it was, and then the white man came to the country, came to the land of the Indians and stole their land and took their resources and enslaved them and killed them. I was like, what? I couldn't believe what I was reading. Like, this is a, a six or seven year old. What I'm saying is, it's programmed racism. I know it's hard to believe and people don't want to believe it, but you've got the psychopathic left right now programming racism throughout municipal working. I experienced it as a, as a city worker, as a white person trying to work in a minority uh, uh, you know, environment. And I was just a big dumb white guy to them. They just refused to, uh, they refused to work with me, really. And so programmed racism is very real. And that's what I'm talking about here. Because when young kids come out of the projects, they're not, in, in, they're not instinctually bad people. They're taught that from society. That's my point. So if I'm wrong, if Tessa, I know that the mainstream media, oh, it was a, a botched mugging, they're going to get them. They'll get the guys that did it. They'll, they'll find it. They have video now. The NYPD will find the two fucks that did it, that stabbed that girl. And they will, they will, they'll get them, right? And when they do, if it turns out I'm wrong, then I will admit to being wrong. How about you? Guy's sitting in the park over here. Get along. Maybe he's going to mug me and stab me. I don't think so. So... Maybe everybody should have a camera. Keep an eye on that guy. <laughs> see, don't don't let don't see that's the point, man. Don't let people. I'm I'm paranoid. Like am I paranoid because somebody just got killed in a park and I'm walking through the park? The sun's just coming up, so it's you know it's <laughs> it's so dark out. One last story before I talk about the election. When I used to, um, I was heavily into meditation, of vipassana meditation where you would sit you know 10 days in silence 30 days in silence and and in that process um, they used to say that God speaks to us at 6 a.m. <laughs> there's also a guru his name is uh, Sri Sarai Chinmoy said that as well he was a running guru out in Queens he's dead but they still worship him and he said the same thing 6 a.m. is the time where God speaks so, God, I'm listening. Channel your, channel your wisdom through me. All right, so we say, well, eight minutes in, I still haven't talked about the election, the main story. So let me talk about this, and we'll get it out of the way. So there are seven candidates left, because it, this is big picture stuff. I know it's just corrupt democratic politics, but there, there has to be, there, we have to maintain some degree of hope that we can turn the boat around and, and, and wrestle power away from the oligarchs so that people don't keep slipping into abject poverty in this country. Right? Trump yesterday, oh, China, China, throw the, he, he took the tariffs off the table. He gave them a, the sweetest deal they ever wanted. They, it, was, it was bad for us, now it's worse. Thank you, Trump. Is that what you want? Is you, if, unless you get the money out of politics, unless you, you ensure that we have free and fair elections, unless you break up the banks and, and, and <clears throat> tax the billionaire class, nothing will change. 
you must get money out of politics. Our politicians are corrupt, right? They rig elections that I'm about to talk about. I'm about to talk about a rigged election as if it's real. But I'm telling you, it's not real up front. So, so seven candidates. Uh, what's important is that, I think I feel like going this way. Go down the hill. There's the dogs over there. You want to see the dogs? Um, there they are. Uh, right there. Dog park. See, people are not scared where I live, man. I live in a, in a, I live in a tight neighborhood, man. You, people don't fuck around here. I, I love this neighborhood. I live in a white neighborhood. In Bay Ridge. Right? There's a lot of Arabs, too. A lot of Muslims. They, they're good people. I mean, for the most part, they're respectable, hardworking. That's just my experience with it, you know? And, and, uh, but mostly the Italian and the Irish, the old Italian and Irish, they don't fuck around, man. You come here and you want to pull that bullshit, they'll, they'll fucking tie you up on a tree. <laughs> These Italian kids, man, they do not fuck around. Don't fuck with them, man. So, <laughs> I digress. Hold on a second. So, so uh, Joe Biden, there's seven people that qualified, right? The deadline was last night at midnight uh, to qualify for the December 19 debate in Los Angeles. Um... Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, <clears throat> no surprise. Pete Buttigieg, no surprise. He's doing great in the fake polls. Uh, Amy Klobuchar, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tom Steyer, and Andrew Yang qualified. Great. Andrew Yang hanging in there like a trooper. So those are the seven, right? So you'll have a much thinner stage, which uh, we like. Which is, uh, you know, more conducive to actual speaking, actual people having a conversation rather than, you know, half the crowd sitting around for a half an hour not being able to speak. So we may have more vigorous. I, would, I, I don't know how Tom Steyer is on the stage and Amy Klobuchar. That does not make sense. Who, is vo who the hell is behind Amy fucking Klobuchar? The little lady with the head that shakes like this. And the fucking hair goes like this. And I said it and she's like three feet tall. Who's voting for this lady? Uh, so so they both had 4%. They needed 4% uh, in four national fake polls. and Or 6% in early state uh, uh, fake polls. And 200,000 unique donors. So they have all... So those seven people have qualified... Uh, Tulsi Gabbard did not qualify, despite saying that she wouldn't attend anyway. <laughs> Sorry, Tulsi. Sorry, Tulsi, you lose. You lose. It was one thing to, to qualify and, and drop out, Camilla Harris, but you're, you're not even qualifying and you're dropping out of the debate. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't like it. So... So there are, oh, so the, so the DNC, let's talk more about debates because it does matter. We have less than two months away before Iowa, before the first votes come in for a Democratic uh, candidate. And we get to see the degree of cheating in Iowa and New Hampshire and Nevada and South Carolina before Super Tuesday. Will the Democrats rig the, the they're rigging, obviously rigging the debates. They're rigging the field. They have the, the, the process by which the, the, um, the election is calculated at the DNC with superdelegates needing more than 50 percent of the vote to, to win, which nobody can with seven, you know, 17 candidates running. All that part of it is rigged. But will they go to the extreme of actually rigging the polls? Will the exit polls be off by more than 2 percent again? Because they were the last time. In 2016, we, have, we had exit polls off 10, 12, 15%, and then they canceled the exit polls. That's a banana republic. More than 2% off on exit polling, which means when you, when you vote and walk out the door, people will ask you, who would you vote for? And you say, oh, I voted for Bernie Sanders. And, and they'll say, great, and they write it down, and that's an exit poll, and it's usually within a 2% margin of error. It's usually accurate by uh, anything more than 2% off, and it's, it's a rig. The election's rigged. 
And we had 13 and 15 and 12% throughout the country. And that doesn't bother anybody. That's no need for alarm. That's a fucking siren, right? That's a siren. So the DNC announced four more debates, right? The debates are good. We get to see the, we get to see the candidates. They're going to raise the, um, they're going to raise the, uh, uh, the criteria in those four. We don't know what it's going to be. We don't know what moderators will be, but the December 19 one is confirmed. That's in Los Angeles. Uh, so there'll be another debate right before Iowa uh, on June 14. That election is February 3rd. In New Hampshire, February 7. That election is February 11. Then uh, Nevada is uh, February 19th, and the election is February 22nd. And there'll be a final uh, debate uh, in South Carolina on February 25th, and the the election is February 29th. All of it leads to Super Tuesday, which is March 3rd, 40% of the vote. 40% of the vote comes in on, on Super Tuesday. So, so here we are again. You remember 2016? We were screaming from the rafters. What a great time to be in politics. What a great time to be a commentator for me, anyway. What a great time for you to be witnessing the stealing of another election. The, when does it stop? Is there a tipping point? The Democrats are busy right now trying to impeach Trump. Right? The, the Republican conservative, they're trying to arrest Comey. <laughs> That's all they got. The, the conservatives want that. Oh, the Pfizer court. Oh, yeah, the fucking Pfizer court. It doesn't matter anymore. Russiagate is, it's bullshit. We already know the truth about Russiagate, that the, the Democrats rigged the primary and tried to blame Trump. We know all about that, right? What, what do you want to relitigate? You want to, you want to officiate it with, with officials and nobody's going to get, there's no consequence to any of it anyway. So what's the point? Democrats... They want to impeach Trump in the, in the House, move it over to the Senate, where it'll never pass, and Trump will stay in office. And hardy, hardy, hardy. And if you keep fucking with him, he's going to win again. If you keep fucking with us, he's already a shoe in Look, Trump is the favorite. Don't kid yourself. Don't listen to the polls. Democrats are 10 points ahead. Donald Trump, President of the United States, is the favorite to win in 2020 right now. Because the Democrats are shafting the only guy who could win, which is Bernie Sanders. And that is the fact. Inescapable. I mean, I talked to a guy, I talked to a guy yesterday, right? Doesn't follow politics. He's a dog walker. Walks dogs in Central Park for a living. Right? Nicest guy in the world. Good friend. Right? And and he knows that I do this, right? And he said, he said, so who do you, what do you think of the election? Who do you think? I said, well, it, you know, I said it right from the beginning. It's, if it's Trump and any other Democrat but Bernie Sanders, Trump wins. And he, he was like, and then I said, I said, Bernie Sanders, if Bernie Sanders is the candidate, he will win. And the guy's like, he's like, absolutely. He's the only candidate that connects to real people. Right? He's not about burning anything down. He's about building an economy that works for everybody. Now, could he do it all by himself? No, he never said he could. Is he going to, you know, turn the, turn the you know, capitalist, failing capitalist system into communism? It's ridiculous to even say that. Is he a socialist? Well, democratic socialist. Does he want social programs for all people? Oh, will he live past, uh, into two terms? I don't know, maybe not. He's getting old, but it doesn't matter. Get in there. Get in there, win. Set it up. Tulsi Gabbard, Secretary of State. <laughs> uh, yeah, Andrew Yang, Secretary of the Treasury. <laughs> oh, what a day, man. Elizabeth Warren, Vice President. Oh, fucking, we're having a good time now, right? Bernie Sanders leading the troops. You get... You get Kennell West in there as the as the press secretary. <laughs> well, I was like, 
Imagine, could you imagine Connell West? You know who Connell West is. Look him up. Is is the uh, intellectual from uh, where is he? I think he's at MIT or fucking I don't know where he is. Or Rutgers? I don't know. He's a, he's a he's a a Princeton. He's a Princeton professor, and he's like he's like with the hair, the Afro fucking guy. He's a what a great what a brilliant man, and and it, it it brings me back to the other point. I'm not a racist, man. Don't you can't say that I'm a racist. I care about people. I care when someone gets stabbed in the park. And it's racially motivated, whether people believe it or not. I just want to say that because I, I have, you know, I know a lot of people say they have black friends, but I, I actually have friends of color, of, of, you know, from different countries and China and Taiwan and Thailand and India, you know, and fucking all over the place. South America, Brazil. You know, like growing up in, in downtown Manhattan, I have all kinds of, all kinds of people that I, you know, that I know and have, have learned from, and so I, I am, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a racist, but I believe that the country, is is, shun, shunning white people, right? It's and I and I don't think Bernie Sanders agrees with that that assessment either, and there's where I may differ with him, that white people really do feel right now that they are being discriminated against, and in my humble opinion. In my humble observation and experience, it's true. I didn't believe it. You know, I, I was living in a, in a bubble in downtown Manhattan with a lot of, with the hipsters, you know, and, and we were all different colors, shapes, and sizes, and nobody even realized that racism was raging in this country. We didn't even know it, right? And, and, um, and, and then I, I left that, that bubble to come here to now I live in Brooklyn I was priced out for whatever reason and I saw it with my own eyes right I saw it with my own eyes the deep the deep seated racism that still exists in this country did it get better with Obama I don't know but what I'm saying is when a woman when a when a young white woman walks through the park and gets mugged by by people the story is told that the police are telling the story of, of a bunch of young people from the projects. I know what that is. I got jumped in, in junior high school. I was waiting for the bus, right? And a bunch of a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, uh, men of color, uh, boys of color, same age, uh, jumped me, and I missed the bus. And three or four of them laid into me. They took my books, punched me around, and some teacher came walking over trying to break it up. Okay, boy, stop fighting. As if it was no big deal. Now, if I would have taken out a knife and stuck it in his, in his, in his chest, then I would have been a bad guy. I would have been the bad guy for protecting myself. Which brings up the other uh, aspect. I know a lot of people about gun, gun control. If, if we didn't have such strict gun, you know, gun regulation in this country, uh, and, and that girl, Tessa, Tessa Majors, had a gun in the park, or if I had a gun right now in this park, I'd feel a lot safer, right? I feel pretty safe right now, but I, I, I mean, if someone were to approach me, I could see them coming and, and use a protection device to take them down. So I do believe in that. I, I believe in the Second Amendment, you know, and um, it, it does raise the question, if the girl was in the park, but she was jogging, is she going to jog with a pistol? You know, I mean, and would she have been able to get it out quick enough? I don't know. I, I, I mean, those are questions, those are question marks. But I do know that when people have guns, people that will mug other people in a park uh, tend to be cowards. Those people are cowards that, that, you know, murder people. So I'm going on and on. I'm sorry for the long rant. But Marcus Conti reporting here uh, on the primaries. And um, I'll do a follow-up on, um, on the murder in the park, in the Morningside Park, once we have the uh, suspects uh, apprehended. If it goes on and on, I'll head up there, and uh, we'll see if we can poke around in the street and, and put the feelers on the ground, because there's a killer at large right now, two of them. They released the two teenagers. They, they don't have a suspect. Well, maybe they do. Who knows? 
NYPD is slick. Let them do their business. So uh, again, now that you're here, and you're, if you're still here, kindly make sure that you subscribe uh, to Marcus Conti News. The link is down below. If you're watching this on Marcus Conti News, subscribe to the other channel just in case if one goes down, you're on both, right? And I'm going to keep posting these videos to both channels for a while until I can move the crowd over to Marcus Conti News. And, um, you know, hit the like button if you can. Hit the share it, share the video, right? Uh, don't do it for me. Do it for yourself, man. Don't do me a favor. Right? Get the message out. I'm, your, I'm a mirror. I'm the cosmic mirror. That's all I am in this. I've said it from the beginning. Uh, I just, I read your comments. I, I, look at, I look at the news and I, I reflect what I see. So thank you very much. Marcus Conti reporting.